So, um, one thing that I really cherished as a as a kid growing up here on Little Boston Reservation was working with my aunts and my my dad and my mom in different aspects to learn how to clam dig, learn how to crab, and catch salmon. I mean, my dad had us out there whipping a net, catching salmon, and um, at some point he let us go do it by ourselves, and, and that's because we learned at a pretty young age how to to harvest. And I think that's exciting for me to be able to teach my kids that. My daughter's 13, and I bring her out to the beach right now just to get a feel for what it's like out there, bring her out at the dark, and it's, you know, she's scared and it's normal. And, uh, but, you know, it, we are a, a community that relies on the natural resources that are, and it's a cultural resource for us as much as a natural resource because we teach each other. We, we're doing the same things our ancestors did to sustain ourselves, and, and it's a part of our identity, and it's a part of what we like to do. Um, not only do we have to do it, but we love to do it. And it's, uh, it's exciting to do with my children. My son already knows more crabbing spots than I do. Uh, he goes out with my, my brother, and uh, they're, they're really good about you know, keeping their patches a secret. And, and our, our, <clears throat> our UNA is fairly large, so it's hard for me to, I always try and get some secrets out of him on where I should be dropping crab pots. And, and uh, he holds them pretty well for, my, for his uncle. Corey, I mean, and uh, and that's a little frustrating for me sometimes, but he'll also kind of spill the beans every now and again. And he's only ten, so he understands the importance of a good a good spot to harvest at. And um, so those are things that he's learning about his culture, about his treaty right, and the importance of of being a Port Gamble Skalalum tribal member. And uh, I think it's really exciting to go out there with him. And, and try and get information out from him because my brother's been crapping a lot longer than I have. So for me, it's, it's kind of a hit and miss. And, and my son, Jake, has been out there a few times with him, so he knows the good spots. So um, it's pretty fun to, to have that be a part of our family. I mean, to have the ability to have them know their treaty rights, even though they don't realize they're practicing a treaty right, they don't realize they only get to go out there because they're Port Gamble's Kalam tribe members. They don't understand that yet, but they know they get to go do it. And um, so it, it's important for them to, to get out there and, and learn. My mom was a fisherwoman back then, and she got in a lot of trouble just practicing her treaty right. And even after the Bolt decision was made, she still got in, in trouble practicing our treaty right, even though it was legitimate, you know, it, it wasn't recognized. And now that it's more recognized, um, it is easier for us to to maintain our rights, but we need to start enhancing those rights. We need to make sure that, that our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren have access and the resource that we currently have, but is being depleted. Sure. I, th I think what a lot of people in my generation are doing is teaching their children, whether like I have a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old, and we're teaching them how to crab, how to dig clams, either for, for the dinner table or, or for commercial. And for us to have that right taken away from us would be devastating to our families, devastating to our children, because they already recognize that that's part of who they are and that's part of what we cherish in my generation and we they understand it coming from from their parents as well as their grandparents most of the grandparents around here are actual the teachers actually the teachers of of what these kids are learning and that is to get out and and be out on the beach or be on the boat and practice your treaty rights and and um, we're very grateful to have our grandparents not only teach us uh, as we're growing up, but also teach our, our children, their grandchildren, the importance of getting out and harvesting. And 
if that were taken away, I think um, it would be a community without an identity like we have now. Our identity is practicing our treaty rights throughout the whole UNA. And they know that. Our, our kids already know that they're, it's, it's okay for them to get out there and, and dig clams. It's okay for them to go out and um, throw crap out in the water. And so if they weren't able to do that, they, they would know that they lost something. And that loss would be felt for a long I mean, look at how much loss we had from language and culture being taken away from us for one generation. My great grandma had it taken away from her. She, um, she was afraid to teach her children how to speak Sklallam. She's afraid to teach her children how to speak and sing in our language. And that was lost. And that was lost for that one generation. And so it was lost for my mom's generation. And then it was lost for my generation. And it's being rebuilt in, the, in this generation, in this, in this time right now. We're, we're trying to recapture all the things that we had lost. But just for that one time, time frame when, when people were being taken away from their homes and that culture and their, their identity was taken from them, it was lost for three generations. And that's a huge loss.